Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Beneath a Steel Sky. Well, the bait is set and Spunky wants some biscuits. Let's give it to him. There we go. What was that splashing noise? Where has Spunky gone? Officer Blunt, come and help me, quickly! And now the guard is distracted so we can actually go inside where he was guarding. But I want to talk to them first. Oh, Robbie, can you help? What's the problem? Poor Spunky's in the lake. Thought you said he needed a bath. Yes, but I found out why he doesn't like water. The silly sod swims in circles! As opposed to what? Well, actually, I guess Monkey can't swim, but circles are apparently too low status of a thing. I have no idea what's going through her mind, and I don't even want to know. Let's hope he got rid of his fleas. But he could be drowned! What's well, bound to happen sooner or later? Like, it's either fleas or drowning. Which is more important to you? Try offering him doggy snacks. An excellent idea, Robert. It's a pity Officer Blunt didn't think of that. It's a pity the mutt can swim it all. Well, he should learn about how to stand on water, Mr. Blunt Jesus. Seriously. Uh, there's something really, really wrong about the scene. I don't think it's supposed to do this, but every time Blunt talks, he just kind of stands up and stands on the water because that's where his sprite is really is compared to where he is crouching. He'll stop paddling when he's tired. But then he'll sink. You men are useless. It's only a dog love. I shall report you, Blunt. And don't call me that. I prefer being a widow. Or, I guess, I don't really know. You get it? And Blunt has something to say. Why don't you jump in and grab him? Well, I'd ruin my uniform. Why don't you save it? I grew up in the Gap. I can't swim. Apparently there's no water out in the Gap. I wouldn't be... I'm not surprised. But hey, he doesn't have to go in and swim in and grab him. He can just grab him out of the water because he is Blunt Jesus. Did you see the dog fall in? It's my job to be a servant. To memorize every moment in minute detail. So how did the dog get in the lake? That's obvious. Either he was blown by a freak gust of wind, or else it was a suicide bid. Okay. Well, now that he's distracted, let's go into the cathedral. Just for a second, you scared oh. me. But you're only dummies. Uh, uh, it, it, it looks creepy, it really does. But this isn't actually an interesting area. They're not human. Someone's been making androids. Hmm. They must have switches to activate them somewhere. Damned if I'm gonna look for them, though. Because I'm not interested in the slightest of having a partner android or something. Heck, we could even fit, you know... A yeah. ventilation shaft. Better keep away from the edge, or I'll get sucked off. Uh, of all the innuendo that is in this game, that's probably my least favorite. This is... Like, this isn't a ventilation shaft. It's huge. Where does it go? It goes to hell or something. It's really daunting, especially the angle. Now, I've always wondered, is there actually a circuit board for these guys? No. You can't get Joey. Darn it. Oh well, let's go down the other door. And into another really creepy place. And did I mention there's no music? It's, 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 it's. It's a kind of bed with wheels. That's what it is. It's a kind of bed with wheels. The wheels are locked in place. 
There could be something useful in there. And? Wouldn't you know it. It's locked. Of course. Now, we have the same thing that we did in the security building. We have a row of lockers, so let's open them. Oh, God. Not what I wanted to see. Um. There aren't any markings on it. Or locks. Hmm. Well, I might as well look at it. You don't look so healthy. You should get out in the sunshine. Now, Robert, you should have a different reaction to seeing a dead body in a locker, and it could be anything else except for what you just said. His skin is cold, like plastic. Well, let's keep opening them. And, of course, the way Robert opens them, he completely obscures what's inside of him. This place is spooky. His skin is cold, like plastic. Hmm. Let's open this one now. Well, he... From where I'm seeing him, he looks like he has a smile on his face, but I really doubt it. He doesn't have any eyelashes. Oh, that's why, probably. His skin is cold, like plastic. Just me, or is he saying all of those three differently? I kind of like that. I can't even see what's in here, but it's a hello. Hello. Ugh. Yo, that's horrible. Exactly the reaction you're supposed to have, Robert. I don't think a severed head would be any use. Useful in another game that I'm thinking of. And now the middle one. Oh, no. Not her. Not Anita. Oh, no. Well, so much for our only ally. <sighs> Her skin is burnt and blistered. Different from the others. She appears to have been exposed to radiation. Huh. Well, I might as well let's just leave them open. Let them air out, I guess. But Anita uh, recently killed. We just recently talked to her. Who did this, and why? And Blunt and Mrs. Paramount and Spunky are all gone, so... Except Joey's trashed body is still here. But anyways... After that kind of heavy moment, I need some levity. Let's go to the club! How about it? Excuse me. Hello, Mr. Overman. How did you know my name? You're a member now, sir. And we can get in. It's my business to know all our members. Can I go in now? Certainly. But you're in for a disappointment. How come? It looks smart with the lights turned low, but in daylight, it's a flipping toilet. I don't really like the doorman because he just has this... Uh, presence. A really good presence in terms of his character. What would you do if you found a body? Go through its pockets. Uh, no, seriously. A girl I know has been murdered. It's a sign of the times. There's nothing as cheap as human life, with the exception of this club. How do you know it was murder? I only met her a few hours ago, and she was fine then. My advice is to keep quiet. You can't help her now, so look after yourself. Or you might wake up dead one morning. Thanks for the advice, doorman. Never mind. Now, you might have noticed that the club's name is St. James. Um, I believe that is another station name from of uh, Sydney Subway Station. Kind of like Museum Station, which we saw in the last video. Now we can actually head into the club and see what it's like. Of course, in daylight, it, it's not really anything, but there is Gallagher down here, of all people. But unfortunately, he doesn't have anything new to say. Never mind. I'm kind of surprised. Oh well. There's a glass. There are greasy fingerprints on the glass. Hey! Get your hands off my drink, Buster! Ah. Well, something tells me we need that glass, but let's talk to the man. Hi! Mind if I join you? 
Good afternoon to you, Mr. Overman. What do you think of the club? Mmm, the decor is really unpleasant. I chose that myself. I don't like the music. Neither do I. They should have retired years ago. I'm Colston, the manager of the club. Pleased to meet you. So we got Vic Colston. And he has a dossier. High Green is where he lives. Colston has a history of heavy drinking and gambling and has been taken into a custody on several occasions for disorderly behavior. He is the manager of the St. James Club, which employs the Hot Club Quartet, a band whose futuristic music is suspected of contributing to the high level of West Block delinquency, suspected of anti-corporate activities. How do I get out of this city? Can you see I'm busy? I'll take your turn for you. And lose the game for me? You're gonna lose anyhow. Don't be so sure, Gallagher. I've got something up my sleeve. I knew you were cheating. Well, so are you. He's a bit of a loud mouth, of course, because he drinks heavily. He's really weird eyes, too. Like, they try to make him look like he's squinting or raising an eye and winking and kind of looks weird. Oh, nothing. But kind of that's all we can do. Now there's a lot of things we can actually do in terms of dialogue in terms of this. Um, probably not going to be able to show them all off because they're kind of weird in their combinations, but uh, you can talk to this woman and you can have a nice little bit of a conversation for her, but uh, beyond that there's nothing much else to do, so we're going to talk to the barman instead before we talk to her. Excuse me. Can I have a drink, please? No chance. Eh? Why not? Nice rose. Okay. Excuse me. What are the band called? The Hawk Club Quartet. But there's only three of them. Yeah, the saxophonist OD'd last month. If you did notice the people behind there, there is only three. There's only a drum, uh, drummer, a pianist, and a bassist. Did the saxophonist OD on drugs? No. Too much sax. He got overexcited and ruptured his lungs. Huh. Well, actually there's something interesting I have on the band, but I'll get through all these beforehand. Do the rules prohibit me from drinking? No, you can drink all you want, but I can't serve you. Why can't you serve me? You are the bartender, right? Well, I'm not the cabaret. How come you can get a drink and I can't? I told you. It's the house rules. So what are the house rules? Post didn't fire me if I gave you a drink. I'm gonna complain about you. Please yourself. Huh. Alright, well, we actually... Because we didn't talk to the woman... Uh, before? We can actually ask about her. Who's the lady? What lady? There's only one woman in here. Watch what you say. That's Bouncing Babs. Why is she called Bouncing Babs? Can't you guess? Now, there's something really odd about these three. Uh, technically, there's only really two because um, the audio got switched. The audio got switched between, I believe, these two. So, if you answer this one, you get pogo stick antics, and the other one, you get physique. I don't know how that happened, but, well, yeah. She's famed for her pogo stick antics? You're remarkably astute, pal. This one is just kind of interesting. I like it a lot. Is she skilled at trampolining? You're remarkably astute, pal. Never mind. And now that we have that idea in our mind, let's talk Excuse to Babs. Excuse me. Except, we keep bumping into each other. I hear you're into trampolines. Get lost, you little jerk! Isn't that why you're called Bouncing Babs? No, it's not. And before you ask, it's nothing to do with what you're thinking. So how did you get the name? I 
Ben the bouncer. Ah, okay. Excuse me. See you later. Oh, then count on it. And even if you have a nice, pleasant introduction, she still says don't count on it. Well, let's talk to Colston because we need a drink. Oh, nothing. What? Hey. What, we can't get a drink? Excuse me. That's weird. Oh, well. Never mind. Anyway, there's the band. Down there. Never the bartender won't serve me. That's because you're a probation remember. Don't blame Barry, he's only doing his job. The liquor laws have been tightened since last year's baby sham riots. Hey, get on with the game, Colston. All right, no need to get excited. Oh, no. Yeah, nothing. But here's the band down here. Let's go talk to the band while they're playing being extremely rude because you know that's Robert's thing. They look really happy. Or stoned. I want to hear some Joy Division. Just shut up, you. Anyway, now I said I had something interesting about the band, and I do, because I actually have a dossier about one of the members of the band, and that is the pianist over here. His name is Joel Santini who lives in Turnvale Tower. Professional pianist, a.k.a. Surreal McCoy. Regular engagement at St. James Club as leader of the cult band the Hot Club Quartet. Following an accident during a security raid on the club, Santini made an astounding comeback despite having three fingers bitten off from his right hand. Granted a lifelong appeal for protection, Santini is under constant security scrutiny. So yeah, just kind of imagine that for a moment. You have your left hand, which has your five fingers, and then you have your right hand, which only has two. And you're still playing the piano amazingly. Or as well as you can, considering the music you play. Really, really interesting. Now there's a jukebox over here. The select button isn't lit. And because the band is here, um, the jukebox Pressing the buttons doesn't achieve anything. Jukebox doesn't do anything while the band is here. If the band was gone, the jukebox would actually be working. It, it kind of makes logical sense. Why would you have the jukebox on when a band is playing? There's no sign of a lock or a card slot. Hmm, this is an interesting door. However, over here is... There's a thumb-sized indentation in the plate. A metal plate. It's very hard to see. It doesn't react to my thumbprint. Hmm. Well, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Hmm. Well, let's go back up and see what we can ask about this thumb blade. Hey, Gorston, you stop drinking. Oh no. No, I can't. Excuse can't, me. I can't do anything here. Oh, here we go. Where does the locked door lead to? Oh, that's the wine cellar. Excuse me. Well, nope. See you later. Oh, don't ca okay, so the wine cellar is ridiculously Excuse me. guarded by a thing. Where does the locked door lead to? To the wine cellar. Carlson's the only one who can open it. Ah. It's programmed to read his fingerprints. Never mind. Interesting. Colston, come on. I need to inspect your wine cellar. Forget it, mister. Nobody gets in there but me. Are we playing cards or what? All right. This guy distracted me. Yeah, right. So we can't really do anything oh, no. about that. And that's kind of all we can do with the club at the moment. We're actually in here fairly early, but it had it, it has different things compared to later when we actually have a reason to be in the club. So that's why I went there. But now we have to do something about the whole Anita being dead business, because... Heck, why... Ugh, she's dead. We're very, very angry about it. So I'm gonna meet you back up at the top floor. 
back up in Erie Tower, and we're gonna see what we can do. Okay, we're back up here, and, uh, well, hey, Lamb's still Lamb. up here. We might as well talk to him to see if he knows anything about a death of one of his employees, if he'll get out of my way. What do you know about Anita's death? I don't know what you're talking about. The girl you sent to the reactor. She's been killed, Lamb. Look, I don't know out about murder. You might think I was hard on the last. But I had nothing to do with her death. Hey. Get back here. I'm not done talking to you. When did you last see Anita? When I sent her to the testing room. Why wasn't she given a rad suit? I don't know. It's not my fault. You're the supervisor. You deserve to lose your status. Now it's your turn to be a D-Link. Hey. I think that's all we can say about Lamb. See you later. <sighs> that's what you get for being a crap supervisor. Somebody dies. Well, welcome back to the factory for one last bit. And, well, we're back here because we have Excuse one me. last place to go to. Let's talk to Potts to see if he knows anything about Anita's death. I should have went over to him so Robert didn't have to do all of this walking. Potts has nothing to say. Never mind. Of course he doesn't. Alright, so, well, things have changed over here. Like, look, overalls. Plastic overalls. Not very fashionable. Well, let's pick them up, then. Or close the locker. God, stupid Robert. Now for something interesting to look at. You might want to pause the video when it actually shows up. You'll know it when you see it. This is why Robert will not take off his jacket. A teddy bear thingy on him. He's got a teddy bear shirt. But now we're in a rad suit, so we should be good about going further into this room, into the reactor. Notice the man is also gone too. Hmm. Interesting. Now, uh, wait, no, we don't even need our card for the control panel. We can just use it. You know, no security for a reactor. Let's open the door and head inside because Anita had to be inside in order to be fried like she was. The power in those things gives me the willies. You saw all those numbers. If it wasn't for the heat shield, I'd be frazzled. Exactly. Now, there's actually something in here we need and it's very tiny it's right over here it's another card it's an ID card minus the security logo hmm interesting let's pick it up and let's get out of here because I don't want to be in a reactor for too long not like it does anything wrong with in terms of you know uh, killing Robert but I, yeah I don't want to be in there a long time now before we actually leave uh, we want to close the door. To be honest, actually, you can leave the door open. It doesn't matter. Nothing happens if you leave the door open. But I just like to because it's me. But anyway, we have that, and now we can switch back into our regular coach. Me too. Let's see our teddy bear. Actually, I forgot to examine our own coat! We should look at the teddy bears some more. More teddy bears. It might be old, but my coat is cool. You're the only one who thinks that, Robert, as you put it on for a second second time? Yeah. Well, third time if you count and everything. Whatever. Like it's really interesting because you can even see the red of the undershirt underneath. It's really cool. 
So, with that, we have picked up another Link card, which has an image of Anita on it. Now this is... This is where we're ha well, we have another card. But what we can can we do with a card with the person who has been given the Link's uh, D-Link status? Well, we actually have to head back to do the security building of all places. But that's going to be for next time, as we head further into Link's space. See you next time, everyone!